The last group we're going to talk about with envenomations is the order of insects called the Hymenoptera. It comes from the Greek hymen meaning membrane and pteron meaning wing, so winged uh, membrane winged, and that's what these insects have. And it really consists of the bees, wasps, like the yellow jackets and the hornets, and the ants. And we'll be talking about the fire ants specifically here. They are mostly social insects in that they're, uh, you know, they stay together and they, their attacks are mostly defensive in order to protect the group. There's one bee of note that we should talk about, which are the killer bees that you've heard of, which is a hybrid of the European honeybee and the African bee, which came out of a beekeeper from Brazil who was trying to hybrid these two in order to make a bee that would make more honey. And instead, what he made was a really hyper-aggressive bee. Now, the venom from these bees is not more toxic than any other venom, but the thing that makes them more deadly is that these things will swarm and attack. So instead of getting one bee sting, you're going to get like hundreds of bee stings. It's going to get a greater dose of the venom. And these bees have been moving up from South America into the U.S., and so now we find them in the southern U.S. So now let's talk about their venom. And it's full of all sorts of stuff, some of which can cause hemolysis and rhabdo. Other parts are neurotoxins. But the main thing that is the problem with these bee stings and uh, wasp stings, etc., are is anaphylaxis. And this will present with a bimodal uh, distribution with the first episode happening about 30 minutes to hours. And the second one could take as long as uh, one to even 72 hours. Now, not every patient is going to have this biphasic distribution. Only about 20% will. But if this initial peak here, if this initial presentation was really severe, then they're more likely to have a second one. So after bee sting, it's prudent to observe the patient for at least four to six hours. And if they have a bad reaction, admit them to be monitored for that possibility of that second peak. Now, what would happen if you sent them home because they didn't have a bad reaction, but they did have that second peak, well, you better send them home with good instructions to return if anything worsens, but also send them home with an EpiPen and instructions on how and when to use it. Now let's talk a little bit more about the fire ant specifically. Its venom is neurotoxic, cytotoxic, and hemotoxic, and these bites can be fatal. Now the way these things attack is they will use their pinchers here and they'll latch on so it latched on over here, and then using its back end, it stings. And it will just spin in a circle, using that pincher as the center of the circle, and then just keep stinging as it goes, creating this uh, giant circle. And about 24 hours later, you're going to get this sterile pustule, along with erythema that forms and could even spread to involve the whole arm, and then the whole arm even starts to swell, and then the patient starts developing anaphylaxis. And the toxin can affect other organs, like the heart. It can cause bradycardias, MIs, and dysrhythmias. And we already talked about that these can cause hemolysis. It could cause acute kidney injuries, in addition to the anaphylaxis. So we're not going to talk about the management of anaphylaxis here, but we'll just talk about it very briefly since it really is important to the treatment of hymenoptera, stings, and bites. So here's our patient with the, let's say, bee sting, and developed hymen uh, anaphylaxis and so became pink and swollen and edematous. So the first thing you need to do is give epinephrine. And you're going to give the epinephrine about 0.3 milligrams IM of the 1 to 1,000 solution. And there's two places it's typically given, in the deltoid, so maybe in the arm there, or in the lateral, anterior lateral thigh. And some people feel that the anterior lateral thigh works better, so I'd probably give it there. This patient may be wheezing, so give some albuterol. And we know that there's a huge allergic component to this. So give steroids and H1 and H2 blockers as well. Now this may not work, so you may have to give a second dose of epinephrine and maybe even start them on an epi drip. Now we all know that when bees sting, they leave the stinger behind, and so that stinger is going to continue to cause problems. So if that's there, look for it, and you want to remove that so that you get rid of the thing that's causing all of these symptoms. And very important is before they go home, you want to do two things. Number one, tell them, 
Hey, you're allergic to bees. Don't go anywhere near bees, wasps, yellow jackets, or ants. And secondly, give them an EpiPen. I usually give them two. I'll also have them follow up with the allergist. And they can work on any desensitization or anything like that if possible. And that's it for the Hymenoptera stings. Thanks. Put any comments down below if you have any. Adios.